All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. I love to be here again. <laughs> so tonight is um, open that bottle night. And it's we definitely all pick the bottle. The bottle. <laughs> yes. She picked the bottle. Um, <laughs> And uh, so as part of the wine snob calendar, which I scoured the internet for all the various different wine days, the last wine day for February is February 27th, and it's Open That Bottle. I believe it's the last Saturday of the month. I think so. Yeah, it's Open That Bottle. So if you have a bottle that you've been looking at, holding on to, waiting. Yeah, don't hold to it anymore. Drink it today. Yes. Open it February 27th. Open that bottle night. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we gonna enjoy today? Well, um, there's we're gonna have a petite Syrah by Ooh. Convergence Vineyards. They're not even on Instagram, that's how small they are. I know, I tried to look at them on Instagram uh, a long time ago, and I noticed they don't have social media presence. Uh, but I definitely want to go visit and now yeah. I think this bottle is going to give me more reasons uh, to go and, and drink their wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you know, a, a wine snob, just like you, I'm all about um, wines off the beaten path, you know, and parts less known, less traveled. And this is off the beaten path while being off the beaten path so even when I you know, go to it's the yeah. underground of the underground <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know it's funny even to get there you have to veer way off you know on your way to plymouth california you have to veer kind of off to you know on a tangent and you get here and um it's literally the winemaker i think it's a couple and the winemaker and his wife and that's it and they'll be the ones pouring your tasting and you know very small batches yeah. Just the way this like is it. one of the hidden gems and definitely <laughs> in the Sierra Foothills. Uh, so let's see how it is and yeah. how it ages. Yeah, um, this is a 2011 and uh, I picked this up years ago and it's been sitting. I picked two of them up and of their whole lineup, which was some phenomenal wines, um, this one stood out the most. I just loved the way the Petite Syrah expressed itself. It's very robust and uh, I thought it was very age worthy so we'll kind of track and see where it is tonight and make some notes on when to open the other one <laughs> i last revisited them uh when we had a brief open up from the shot from the shutdown mm -hmm. um and uh, i went out there and spoke with the winemaker and i picked up uh, more recent vintages of the of this petite syrah so that would be i think 2016 is what i have now so this would be interesting to see you know how it's been progressing the court doesn't want to come out no way yeah that's one of the biggest like <laughs> alert clients but i don't want to be pessimistic <laughs> it's sealed tight in there hold on i'm gonna have to get my puller to, to work this one out let's see um, what is it? okay so fortunately i have a puller here so let's see Fortunately, you work repaired. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time it's happened. So I'll try By to. all means, it probably means that no oxygen went into yes. that bottle. That's a very tight seal. Oh, wow. There it is. It's wow. coming out. It Yay. was stuck in there like <laughs> super glue. I guess that's a good sign. It's probably a good sign this yeah. time. Oh. Benaki. Come here. Oh, it's breaking. Oh, no. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Wow. Hmm. I'll get a decanter for us. Well, it's definitely moist, so it's a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> Mm. 
I use beakers <laughs> for decanters. That's so funny, a Breaking Bad style, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they work fantastic. Really? Yeah. If you think I'm in wide bottom, yeah, air, lots I of guess. Breathing. Yeah. All right. All right. So get a first pour here. I'm excited. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hmm. Plum. It's petite Syrah. It's got that rich, thick plum. Definitely heavy. The nose is a little shy compared to a lot of wines from this region. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely the plum is in there and a little bit of oak. Yes, there's a hint of that. It's got a nice leather to it mm -hmm. that comes out as it breathes. Definitely needs to be oxygenated. I agree. Like a saddle or saddle leather. Mm -hmm. You can kind of pick faint in the background at the granite. Yes. That granite mineral soil from, mm -hmm. that's typical of this region. Oh, it's really smoothed out, softened up. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is a very... Silky. Plum is very, definitely there yeah. as well in, in the notes of, in the palette. And it's silky, smooth, very well balanced. Yeah. The right amount of tannies. Yeah. There's something on the back. I can't quite... I can figure point. it out what it is, yeah. but it has some a different aftertaste. It's like an allspice or something. There's something. I don't want to say clove, but it's it's very distant. It's like a melange of spices on the back. I think it's all spice. Yeah. It's not clove, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an allspice type mm -hmm. essence way on the back and in, in the finish. Mm -hmm. But I like how the body is kind of softened and smoothed out. You know, it's with Petit Sirah, especially from this region where the grapes get a lot more hang time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you also get a lot of these with these bolder varietals. You get these very um, strong characteristics these strong expressions yeah and don't take me wrong this is a still a very bold red yeah. but it's the balance in the wine is different than yes. the other ones i yeah. think it's basically comes with maturity i guess yes it, sorry it doesn't have to do a lot with the varietal as it is with the aging yes. process but um that's good yeah i'd say this is definitely aged really well mm -hmm. um I mean, I would venture to say now is the time to uh, to enjoy it. I uh, would I venture to say the same thing. Yeah. yeah, a little longer, it might be too late. Yes, it, it might it might actually smooth start smoothing out. I think this is a nice gem. Let's see how it opens after a little bit. It's got a dark, intense color. It, it is, yeah. It's kind of inky. Long mm -hmm. legs. Yeah. Well, it makes sense, the long legs. It's yes. a 14.8% yeah. of alcohol. <laughs> yep. So it kind of makes sense. Yes. <laughs> I love the leather on the nose. I think that's those are parts mm -hmm. of it that I like the most. And that silky mouthfeel. Yeah. It's got a silky mouth feel and it leaves the palate moist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to dry. And... Yeah, I don't think the tannins are predominant. I mean, it, there are definitely some tannins in, to, in it, but it's not like. Sometimes this variety tends to be very, yes. like, full of tannins and like dry out of your mouth. Yeah. But I think in this case, it's so balanced that it's just like 
goes smoothly. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, um, I, I noticed while we were we were searching for the bottle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you um, you had also rec you recognized a couple of the other wineries that I had found off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. you know, Tennis was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did my research, right? Yeah. The only reason I haven't been going uh, more to Amador or Plymouth yeah. is the, the lockdown and what is going yeah. on with the COVID right now. But I, I do, I'm familiar with the region. Yeah. I do like what they're doing there. Yeah. I think they're going in the, in the, in a good path to become a big wine country yeah. uh, because excellent winemakers have moved there yes. um, and they're definitely exploiting the richness of the terroir yeah. and so I, I am big, I'm a big fan of yes. Amador and the Sierra <laughs> Foothills Absolutely. I'm not gonna say no <laughs> like, likewise yeah I mean uh, our wine snob winemaker of the year for 2019 was from Plymouth uh, Terra Rouge Bill Eastern over there and the work is doing is is very exemplary of a lot of winemakers that we found out there, um, and it's it's the the last time prior to that I had explored Amador, you know, about ten years before, mm -hmm. and I noticed a marked difference across the board in the quality of the wines, the execution, the maturity of the style, you know, I, and and. You know, I, I one of the things I, you know, one of the little marks I look for is prior to that, so 10, 10, 11 years ago, a lot of times you'd go and you'd run into, you had no problem running into that Amador Zin, you know, the fruit bomb. They evolved from that. They've completely evolved. And, you know, I started finding, you know, half the Zins out there, you know, would be this very nicely well built, restrained, structured, complex Zin. And it was very impressive. It's far different from Lodi, for example, who stick with the fruit flower scene uh, that is like more for the general public. Yeah. Then, um, like the scene from Amador, I think is for far more complex, like, like you mentioned. Yeah. And it's just fantastic for me. It's really nice that most of these small wineries are family owned, mm -hmm. uh, are small of like people who had a dream. And now they're living their dream. And yep. that's for me, it's what it, it like the magic in it relies is because they put their soul into the wine. It's not just making ma wine for them, for the masses. Yeah, I agree. And that's what I find the most inspiring is, you know, when you, you go out tasting and you walk into a winery like this and the winemaker, the owner winemaker is pouring the wine for you, you know, and so, I don't necessarily expect to always find the owner behind the tasting room, but, but most of the times you do here. It's very nice. Yeah, it's very nice to have at least the owner at least very involved in the process, mm -hmm. you know, and on various levels. And you, you start seeing the manifestation of their vision and their dream. And that's really moving and kind of humbling, you know? It's, yeah, completely. I completely agree. Yeah. It, it, it gives it a certain richness and the fact that they do this for the love of it and yeah they're not in it for the money they're not in it to become like the next big biggest chateau or something chateau right <laughs> or they are not there to be pretentious mm -hmm. like a lot of people think that wine is pretentious yeah. it's so humbling to like listen to them and the story behind that what they do and yeah. like knowing that they are there for the love of yep. the Jews and the art of making wine is just like beautiful. Yeah, you, you just reminded me of uh, when I sat down with one of the winemakers that I've been following for well over a decade now. We've talked about him, you know, a couple of times before, uh, Brian Bumgarner. Yes. And to be able to sit down with him, I sat down with him last, uh, right after the harvest, mm -hmm. um, last fall before winter and uh, you know we we did an, an interview and it was i've been watching him from when you know uh, he was walking me through his story because i hadn't sat down with him actually i'd met him before but we hadn't actually sat down and kind of walked through the story and it was just 
it was even more so, you know, what you just described, you know, as he talked about how he worked the tasting room and, and where he started with wine and, you know, on his travels to Greece and <laughs> came back and this girlfriend ended up being his wife and, um, you know, slowly, you know, started making wine, mm -hmm. you know, as a consultant and then started his own um, winery and it was just that whole story was fascinating and we're finally sitting on his own estate and you know knowing just while talking to him and then taking my mind back to when I first discovered his wines that he had been making and how much I liked them and but then sitting with him now and putting all of that in perspective was really humbling yeah and it's you know knowing that a bottle of wine it's not just a bottle of wine it has a probably and especially when we ch shop from this local small um wineries it's most likely more than just a bottle of wine for them is their dreams yeah. and their efforts and their sacrifices for years in a bottle what we're drinking so it's very very humbling as you mentioned and it's it's just magical. It adds that component of it's just not what you're tasting. Yeah. It's like knowing that you're drinking somebody else's dream. It's the story, yeah. And vision. Yeah. You're drinking someone else's dream. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I should change the tagline on Wine Snob. Wine Snob, drinking people's dreams. Mm. <laughs> tasting. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> From a marketing point of view, know, it might not be best. <laughs> That's a blooper reel. <laughs> Wine snob, what's your dream? Let me taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I won't shit, I won't shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think it's just opening up. A little berry comes through. A little bit of pepper is yeah. coming through. And the, uh, uh, the tan has turned a little dusty, like a yep. uh, fine it has dust some, texture. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's like a little bit of soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In it. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a good wine. And oh, it's a hint perfectly of, yeah. a hint of what? Uh, caramel on the back now. It's just opening up. Hmm. Right where the allspice was, it's a little mm -hmm. more caramel. Oh yeah. It's really faint. Yeah. Oh, it's really there. Yeah. No, not faint. It's really there. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I recently had um, uh, an experience with uh, one of my wine snobs, and it was just funny. You know, I, I get messages from various different you know folks who follow, and uh, he had purchased. Uh, I had put my notes on the Urbina, the 1994. Uh -huh. And uh, I kind of made a, a similar note uh, about how in the back, as he had opened up, you know, about an hour or two later, you know, there was this prominent caramel that developed towards oh, the back. Oh, interesting. And, <laughs> and this dude, I love this guy. He just, you know, he messaged me like, hey, man, I, I just want to let you know, um, I thought you were full of it when, <laughs> <laughs> when I read your notes about that 1994. But... I opened one and I started grilling a steak and it's been an hour or so or something like that. And it was like, there is caramel on the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to know that people is, no, it's like, you know, there's no right or wrong when you're chasing a wine and like, but it can be caramel to you. It can be chocolate to me. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, there's no, when you're tasting a wine and the, the flavors you taste, the smells, yeah. you detect are not going to be the same for everybody yeah and and it's nice to find somebody that validates what you think you yeah. think it has yeah. because it's the intention <laughs> of the winemaker right yeah. yeah but yeah i know I, I know sometimes my notes might get you know pretty in depth and uh i can see how someone might read initially and be like oh, you're not tasting all this stuff but you know, again, to, to seek to a point I was going to make earlier, when you indulge in these artisan wines, you become used to that level of complexity. It's, yeah, it's then go into the store and say, oh, it's 
cherry, strawberry, and oak, you're like, me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, you become used to having that level of complexity and those dimensions. Like, it's normal to open a petite Syrah and say, I don't know what it tastes like. There's going to be four to six layers in this thing. And you're going to discover them over the course of two hours or so, a couple hours. Um, it's normal and I've gotten used to that. And so when I write my notes or when I, I'm opening a wine to taste, I've kind of come to expect that. Mm -hmm. And so very often I'll run into wines which are good, but it's like there's three layers to it. And, and I kind of, I think yeah. I'm kind of spoiled in that respect now where it's like, um, there should be more in here. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you put it in? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, well, there you have it, wine snobs. Open that bottle February 27th. Don't keep it for later. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>